How you doing? It's Ryan with 1075 Emergency Vehicles. Come check out our latest build showcase with this 2020 Ford F-250 for the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office. How you doing? It's Ryan with 1075 Emergency Vehicles. What we're going over today is this 2020 Ford F-250 for the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office. This is gonna be their new fatal accident investigation truck. So we've put a lot of work into this truck, so we're gonna try and showcase everything for you and go over all the details that we tied into this vehicle to help make it more functional. Taking a look up top first, we have a 54 inch sound off signal M power in dual color. We've uh, installed a headlight flasher on the vehicle, which is currently in park, and that automatically turns on and off when the vehicle is put in park through the blueprint uh, control system with the OBD2 reader that doesn't require any splicing into the vehicle. And then what we've also done is we've replaced the high beams and low beams with LED headlights. So that way the headlight flasher is actually flashing that LED, giving them more warning power. And it's also increasing their visibility when they're driving at night. In the grill, we've got four inch sound off signal M powers that are in tricolor. So they're flashing red and blue and they have the white scene override function. So taking a look at the side of the vehicle, you can see the graphics package that we installed on the vehicle to match their existing fleet. Uh, on the front fender, we've got the sound of signal four inch M power in tricolor with the white override scene function. On the running board, we have sound off signal three inch M powers in tricolor. On the top of the cap, we have sound off signal four inch M powers. What we've done is we've installed the wedge to help direct the light horizontally out. And then on the back, we also have a sound off signal four inch M power in tricolor. On the rear side, we have a Blue Seas shoreline. So this ties into the inverter system that they have on the vehicle. So if the vehicle is parked, they can plug it in. It'll energize the 110 volt outlets in the vehicle, and it'll also charge the battery. So if it's going to sit for a long period of time, and then we also did the cap on the vehicle. So the cap is a uh, ARE style fiberglass cap. So both sides have ARE side doors with toolboxes in the side of it to give them a uh, quick, easy storage access. Um, so what we've done is we've installed pin switches on all the doors. What this allows us to do is to tie this into the blueprint system. It then gives us control over the strip lights that we installed here. And then it also gives us the ability to integrate a compartment open door light. Right now we have a three quarter inch technique light installed in the overhead console. Uh, that light is set to flash now. So when the button is pressed, it doesn't flash. When it's open, it starts flashing to let the driver know if they're driving away with um, the possibility of a door being open. Uh, we can also tie in the alert noise on the control panel to alert the driver um, that the door's open. And the nice thing about the blueprint system is we can set it to only make that noise when the vehicle's in drive, but the light can still be on. Other things that you'll notice is we've installed strip lights on both sides. These tie into the inverter system through the breaker panel. And then we also have the light tower controller in this panel. So now we're looking at the passenger side compartment, um, open shelving, toolbox compartment, another 110 volt strip compartment. Uh, we have our LED strip lighting installed with our pin switch tied in with all the other ones and they all turn on individually. So if you open this compartment, only this light turns on. If you open the rear hatch, only the rear hatch stuff turns on. So now we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the light tower. So uh, what we've done is we've structured the roof to help support the weight. So we've got plating on the inside that we made and then uh, we have aluminum anodized strut that we've put underneath the tower to span the roof to help support the light. So what we have is a four lamp night scan LED 12 volt light tower. Um, on the strut, what we've done is to give it a better appearance, we 45 the corners and then instead of um, just leaving it open to collect debris or not look nice, uh, we. Uh, manufactured end caps for it because nothing was available for it. So something like that is something that we're able to do to help kind of finish the install up and give it a nice clean appearance. So we've also done is we've tied the wiring 
for the night scan into the blueprint system. So now we have control over the park signal and we can write a matrix for that. So if we want the parking brake to be on and the truck to be in park, um, we can program that output to send that signal to the night scan. And then we also have the um, mast up indicator. So that way they know through that same indicator in the cab, if the light mast is up and if it needs to be adjusted and all that's done through the blueprint system and allows us flexibility to program it. However, the customer may, may feel that that system will work best for them. So we power the light tower up, wait for it to boot up. And with the mashed up button. Okay, so the light tower is now fully extended. We can have the lights turn on, and then we can have the mass rotate either way that we want. And then we also have the ability to tilt the lights down and up to better focus the light output from the mast onto the scene that they're working on. And then we also have the ability to do the auto stow. So a two click down will auto stow the mast into the correct position. Taking a look at the back of the vehicle, we have an eight module sound off signal traffic controller. This is in tri-color. So we have flashing red and blue. We have an amber arrow stick override, and then we have a white scene override. And that white scene's tied into the reverse lights. In the tail lamps, we have sound off signal hideaways. On the bumper, we have four inch sound off signal M powers. These also have the white override feature. With the hatch open, you can still see we have warning through the rear glass window. Uh, we have our rear illumination lights on inside the cap so it lights up the whole bed area. On the side here we fabricated an aluminum panel to house all of our electronics. So with the blueprint system we have remote nodes back here and fuse panels and then that way we have all of our electronics tied in back here so we don't have to run uh, as much wires up front to the vehicle and have more control with the vehicle and allow it to be flexible in the future. The cabinet that we designed for them was specifically for them. It's on a, a slide master slide out. Um, up front, the drawers, we have two uh, parts drawers. So what we're gonna look at now is the custom rear slide out that we designed for them. This is an eight foot bed, so they have plenty of storage in the vehicle, and we've tried to make it as flexible as possible. The cabinet's been tapered to meet with the side boxes in both sides. Uh, we have an adjustable shelf. We have a parts drawer. Then below that we have another parts drawer. What we did differently with this was we gave them a lift up door lid so it's hinged at the back with storage underneath so they can pull this out, write, do any writing, work on something, take pictures of something, whatever they want to do with it. It's there for them to be, uh, give them as much use as possible. On this side we have two locking compartments so they can lock up evidence or anything else that they may want to keep secure in the vehicle. And then on the driver's side of the cabinet, we have two large adjustable shelves front to back so they can adapt to their equipment and adjust it as they need. And then on the passenger side, it's just a mirror of the other side. We've got a large adjustable shelf. The only difference is we've mounted two flashlight chargers for them along with another 110 volt strip light. So since this vehicle is typically only operated by one, maybe two people in the vehicle at any time, uh, they've elected to remove the seat. What we fabricated is a whole rear seat organizer to give them more storage room. And what we've also done is um, we've integrated our electronics into the back. So we have our inverter, blueprint controller, uh, fuse panels, stuff like that underneath here. Um, and then what we've done is we've vented the front panel to allow airflow. And then we have additional uh, covers here to get access to the electronics. Um, if this were to ever need service where it would be more in depth than just 
getting into these panels here, we have the ability to remove this rear seat organizer and get better access to all the electronics. So it's more of like a modular system. So you have a, a mounting base and then you have the cabinet up top. Taking a look at the passenger side of the vehicle, uh, they've got a larger open storage area. They then have a power strip mounted up top that they can plug any equipment into that they may need. You can then see we have another access panel to the electronics, and then we have another uh, removable vented panel here. And what we've done um, to give them better access to the fuse panel and whatnot, we have our uh, Blue Seas 110 volt panel. So this has uh, individual circuits for the outlets that are on the cabinet. And then we also have the shore power breaker, so if they ever want to isolate that from the rest of the vehicle, they have that ability. Taking a look at the console that we installed for this vehicle, uh, we have one of our raised lift-up armrests, so they can uh, store any equipment that they may want into here. Uh, we've got cup holders, we've got a 3-inch storage pocket for pens, eyeglasses, anything like that. We've got our blueprint control panel, we've installed their radio, and then we have our uh, Xanax inverter control, so the ability to turn it off and see the diagnostics that they may have with that. This is a Kuzmo uh, pass-through that goes back into the factory sink, so we've plugged in the headphone jack and the Blue Seas into the factory outlet, so they still have control over the radio. Uh, up top, we've installed a sound off signal dual color dome light with red white and then you'll see that we have our door open indicator so what we've gone ahead and done is we've opened one of the compartments the lights now flashing to alert the operator that there is an open compartment the door closed the light is off so what we're going to go over is the control panel functions that we've done with this vehicle as you can see our well yelp and tone buttons do not work because the vehicle's in park as soon as the vehicle comes out of park uh, they then have those buttons. Takedown function. We have our left alley function. So a couple of things that we've built in for safety features. So if somebody's following the vehicle, we have the left turn signal shut off built in. Gives them more scene lighting to the rear. We have our arrow stick override for our left, our right, our center out, and then it goes off and goes back to flashing. And then you can see the dim mode on the warning lights. So what we've done is uh, power distribution is always the biggest um, concern with us in serviceability and separation from the vehicle's factory electrical system. Um, we have our breakers right along the front here. Uh, we've got separate breakers for uh, different components. So we have our lighting system. So what that does is that comes off that breaker, goes underneath the rear seat, and then gets distributed out from there. We have a separate feed dedicated just for our light tower to make sure that the light tower has plenty of power in order to operate and provide maximum light output. And then we have our inverter charger breaker. So what happens is, is the inverter system has its power feed that it gets power to produce 110. What that breaker also does is if you plug into the shoreline, it will also charge the vehicle's battery. So if it's gonna sit for an extended period of time, or if they, uh, they're they having problems with the battery, they can use it to charge it up and get the vehicle started until the, vac the battery can get replaced. <clears throat> On the driver's side fender here, uh, what we've done is we've taken out <coughs> the uh, coolant reservoir and then we fabricated a bracket and what we've actually done is we have our all of our components for the front so like we always say is the blueprint system is multiplexing uh, we have our output nodes we have our siren amps we have our headlight flasher and then we also have fuse distribution here so that way it minimizes how much wiring we need to run into the front so if we were going to have um, individual control over every light head that's here we would have to run one wire for each function through the firewall which you don't have the room for so right now all we have to do is run it up to the blueprint system tie it in and then the programming duct takes it from there which makes the vehicle that could be as complex as this very easy to manage and very easy to service because serviceability is the key with any project thanks for checking out our channel today we hope you like this video uh, we hope you like the vehicle uh, we hope that the prosecutor's office enjoys the vehicle and it provides a lot of useful service to them. Uh, if you have any questions about the vehicle, shoot us a message, comment, contact us through our social media, shoot us an email. We'd love to help you out with your next project. Like, share, subscribe.